We're excited tonight to have uh, some guests with us tonight. They are Bob and Barb Van Wyk. They are missionaries to Botswana. And uh, if you don't know uh, Bob and Barb, Barb is a sister to Beth Hurst. And Beth and Tim's oldest three boys were baptized in the second service this morning. And uh, so we're always excited to have family with us. And I don't know if Pastor Weaver is going to say anything else. He always says, nothing to say. That is like amazing. He has nothing to say. Okay. February 11th. Pastor Weaver had nothing to say. Would you give Bob and Barb a warm welcome as they come and minister to us tonight? Good evening. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We greet you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who we just sang about in worship. There's no other name like Jesus. And we just love um, serving him with you in uh, Southern Africa, where we're at. And um, we're there with, first of all, introduce the, the family. Our kids are growing up. In fact, Sister Tostin was thinking that Cameron, who's here with us tonight back in the booth, um, she thought he was our oldest because how times change. But our oldest is Austin, and he's 23, and he's working on going to medical school. And then we have our daughter, Stephanie. She's 19. She's an English major down at Sagu in Waxahachie, and she's loving that. And then our, our baby boy, Cameron, who's 16. He's a 10th grader going to North Polk this year when he's in Cameroon, not Cameroon, when he's in Africa, he goes to Kenya to boarding school at Rift Valley Academy. And uh, I never dreamed that we'd send one of our kids to boarding school, but he's just so unruly and out of control. We had no choice. <laughs> That's not true, is it, Cam? <laughs> no. Cameron did middle school um, in a homeschool environment, and he's a people person, and he needed people. And Rift Valley Academy has been educating missionary kids for 108 years. And it's a wonderful place academically and spiritually and socially. And he really thrives there. So he loves it, and we're thankful that he was able to get a place. So he'll finish his junior and senior year there in Kenya. So we have just finished, just finished our second term already. Seven years we've lived in Southern Africa in the country of Botswana. And uh, we have this last term been in the capital city of Habarone, which was a strategic move. God always knows where to put us at the right time to do what he needs us to do. And it's there in Habarone that we found the people, the, national, the people from the national church to partner with us to help us in the evangelization, evangelization of boys and girls. God allowed us to develop and pioneer this program, Gospel Evangelistic Ministry in the Schools. Bob's going to tell you more about it in just a few minutes, but we have just been blown away by the opportunity we've had to be in front of thousands of students every week, 10 minutes a week, sharing the love of Jesus, telling a Bible story, applying it to their lives to build their character and their values, and then praying over them. And what God is doing is absolutely transformational and so powerful, and we're so excited to be doing it. This is Bob out at a school that he's going to tell you a little bit more about in a few minutes. We also do children's crusades. If a, if a team was to come to us from New Hope here, we would go out in the villages and we would pitch a tent and we would um, do children's ministry there. And it is absolutely a delight to bring the word of God and the hope of the gospel into those village settings. We have some people that we've trained that help us. The people in hard hats are the national people who are the leaders of the GEMS program. You see, if it was just the Bob and Barb show, it wouldn't go very far because we are here now and it would stop, but they are leading on. They've taken the baton. They're expanding the ministry even while we're here, and we are so excited to see the passion in their hearts to reach kids. This other group, this group of teachers, keep those in mind. We're going to ask you to pray for these blue shirts. These are the teachers who we've trained to go into the schools every week. Eventually, we need an army of about 1,800 of them. We want to be in every primary school in Botswana, and we believe it's doable because of the passion and the power of the Holy Spirit that indwells us. Amen? And because you're partnering with us in prayer, and people all over Iowa and some other states partnering with us to see this mission move forward. We also... 
um, have a new initiative this year. We've been asked by Assemblies of God World Missions if we would be leaders for a base camp. And base camp is brand new. It's because God is mobilizing people to reach the unreached people groups of Africa. And this is the answer that our, our leaders have come up with to help us mobilize and get people into those unreached people groups. They get to come to a base camp like ours and spend two months to two years with us. We'll teach you how to live and work on the continent, how to not just survive but thrive in a base camp setting. And from there, you'll be ready to go out to wherever God has it on the continent that you will go. Here's a quick one-minute video to just introduce base camp to you. We see you. So much pain. So much darkness. Where is the hope? Where is the light? The Lord has not left Africa. His hand is not too short to save. He has not been silent. Listen, he is calling a generation, gathering his sons and daughters, his torchbearers, darkness defiers, prison breakers, bringers of the dawn. The time is now. Will you answer the call? Will you join us? So if you have a tug of the Holy Spirit on your heart to serve in missions, base camp would be the place for you. If it's not at our base camp in Botswana, it could be one of the other 10 on the continent. But talk to us. We are here to help you find your place in God's harvest in the mission field. Or if you know someone, pick up our card, have them talk to us, and we will help get them moving through the, the process to see God's dream in their lives be realized, and they can help reach the continent for Jesus. You can also connect with us this time. We always have the prayer cards. Please pick up a new one on our table, update it, put it on your fridge or wherever you keep your favorite people, and uh, pray for us regularly. You know that's the power of, of missions is the praying people praying in the power of the Spirit. But you can also download our app. Maybe you already have it and you already follow lots of other Assemblies of God missionaries, but you can go ahead and download that, download that or just find us at agmd.org slash you slash Ben Wyke. Once you go to our page, you can see the prayer requests that we that we post. You can click on that blue button that just says join us in prayer. And that just tells us there's more people joining our prayer movement all the time. You can connect with us in any way and follow us along um, right there on that page. So we thank you so much for this opportunity to share with you. And um, just appreciate your partnership so much and you standing with us. We're super excited about our third term. And uh, we'll keep you updated on how it's going. Thank you so much. Good evening. It is exciting for us to be here and, and, and share with you, our partners, what God is doing in Botswana. You've heard some things from Barbara already, and, and I just want to share with you a testimony of, that you need to hear because it's not our testimony, it's our testimony. And that's the way we see this. You know, Paul says, how can they hear unless someone tells them? How can they tell them unless they are, unless they go? How can they go unless they are sent? And that talks about our partnership, doesn't it? And so we really see you as, as, as viable partners and, and the partners that, that, that are joined in this. So I just want to share a representative uh, testimony tonight of what God is doing and has been doing in Botswana. Uh, I want to uh, take a scripture tonight just, just to begin this from uh, Isaiah chapter 55. Uh, being from Iowa, this is a good, this is a good scripture for us to uh, look at. If, for those of you that grew up on the farm and have farming backgrounds, you know exactly what I'm talking about um, and, or what this scripture says. Isaiah 55 verse 10 and, verses, and verse 11. Starting with verse 10, the rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. Now here's the application as God has, uh, has uh, given us this vision now. Now here's the application in verse 11. 
It is the same with the word from my mouth. I send it out, and here's the three things out of this. It always produces fruit. It will accomplish all that I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. God's not up there hoping for a good spiritual rain to water his word. It doesn't happen. It's just always going to go out. It, his promise is, is that it is, it, it, is going to, it is going to accomplish all he wants it to. It's always going to produce fruit, and it's going to prosper everywhere it goes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes of time. That's what I was thinking on a Tuesday morning as I was driving with uh, one of our national pastors 45 minutes from my home out to the village. All I'm asking for is 10 minutes of time out of a week to come into the, the, the primary schools meet on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning with a school assembly for 10 minutes before they go to their classrooms. And I'm going to go in and ask for 10 minutes of time. I want to tell a Bible story. I want to relate it to the children's lives. And I want to pray for the children. And then trust that God is going to do something in that 10 minutes of time. And these children, I'm going to a school, and, and we go to schools that are, that, are, that are flooded with brokenness and despair, with heaviness. Most of them are coming from, from, from homes where, where most of the children don't know their, their fathers. There's alcoholism that, that runs rampant through this nation. It's a desperate situation. You go on the school campus, the... the they don't have enough resources to teach their children. The classrooms are overcrowded. There's, there's usually at least 40 to 50 children per classroom in the elementary. There aren't school aides. It's just one teacher. Some of the classrooms at this particular school had four classrooms that meet outside under the trees because there aren't facilities for the kids to be inside. It's just a desperate situation. The parents aren't nurturing their children. They don't help them with their, with their, to make sure that they're getting their work done. It's hard. What is 10 minutes going to do? I sat across from the, from the principal. I explained it, to, and her face was rock hard, and I thought for sure she would have said, yeah, thank you, but we don't need that. You can leave. And I was shocked <laughs> when she said, in the, her face was just chiseled. It was hard. Her, her voice was flat. But I was shocked when she said to me, we need what you have. Can you start next Friday? Yeah, I'll be here next Friday. And so I started coming Friday after Friday. You could feel the heaviness. You could feel the oppression. Nobody was happy. Nobody wanted to be there. The teachers were crabby. The kids were, you know, they're just miserable. It's just a desperate situation. What is this going to happen? And, and, and three months in, three months in, I'm traveling back to this school on my Friday morning. And I'm just praying. I'm always praying. You know, we pray for these schools, but, but this particular school, that 45 minutes, I'm always targeting in prayer because it's just heavy. The other schools, I'm seeing some, I'm seeing some, some progress, but this school, is, there's nothing. I'm saying, Lord, did I miss it? Were we really supposed to be at this school? Is this, this a place where you really wanted us? The Holy Spirit reminded me, he said, you know, what you observe at this, at, at this school is true of all the schools. Botswana calls itself a Christian nation. But we all know that calling yourself a Christian and being a Christian are two very different things, aren't they? And so in the name of Christianity, they will start off the school assembly with a, with a Christian song. And then they'll recite a Christian prayer, maybe the Lord's Prayer, 23rd Psalm, something like that. But you can tell it's just, it's just words that were memorized. It's just done by rote. There isn't any feeling, there isn't any connection to, to anyone. We're just going through the motions because that's what we do. And so that morning I prayed a prayer. I said, Holy Spirit, they're saying the right words. They don't realize they're talking to you. Would, you. would you surprise them this morning? Would you surprise them with your presence? That they would know that there's a God in heaven 
that loves them, that cares about them, that has a hope and a plan for their lives. And I got to the school, and it was the same as, as most other mornings, and, and, and everything else is, is, is going on, that they're lining up, and, and I'm always standing by the kindergartners. There's kindergartners, first graders, second graders, and way down at the end are the sixth graders. And they're all getting lined up, and the teachers are, you know, they're crabby, and it's the end of the week, and the kids are antsy because they want to get out because it's Saturday, or Saturday's the next day, and you know how it is on, on Friday, and a weekend's coming up. And that morning, that morning, they chose to sing the song, Cast Your Burden on Jesus. And it comes to the part of the chorus where, where the kids go, hiya, 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 hiya. They lift their hands in the air and then they stomp their feet, loa, loa, stomp Satan, loa. Well, I've seen this sung before and usually when they get to that part, usually when I, what we observe, is, you know, the kindergartners, they don't learn English until second or third grade. So the kindergartners, they're sitting down there and they're just kind of looking all over. They're trying to still figure things out. And then there's the sixth graders. They've been through all of this. And they're the seniors of the primary school. So the sixth graders, they're over there. They've got their arms crossed, you know, that they're too cool for this. And the fifth graders, they're looking at the sixth graders because they're cool. And they're thinking, if it's too cool for them, it's, it, it, I'm not going to participate because I want to be cool like those sixth graders. So it's usually the second to fourth graders that are participating in that. But that morning... But that morning, God answered prayer. And as I'm standing here by the kindergartners, and as they start to sing, and as they come to this chorus, all I can say is, I witnessed the manifest presence of God like I have never witnessed it before. As he came down on a school with his mercy and with his grace, and I, I just witnessed a breaking and a rending of the spirit realm as the Holy Spirit came in with his power. Because as those children started to sing, from the smallest kindergartner to the toughest sixth grader, they're jumping up and down. Hiya, hiya. Lift Jesus higher. Loa, loa. Stomp Satan lower. Their voices were loud. Their, their expressions were exuberant. The joy on their face was unmistakable. The transformation had come. As the presence of God came in that place, and they experienced the love of God, the presence of a holy God that loved them. In the midst of their brokenness, in the midst of, their, uh, 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 of all of this junk that's going on around them, God comes. And he ministers his life. And the kids just are soaking it in. As they're jumping up and down, as they're stomping their feet. Now this is in the gravel and in the dirt. And now the clouds of, small, of dust are billowing up in the air. This choking dust is billowing up in the air. And you can't, I'm standing by the kindergartners. I can't see the sixth graders on the other side. There's so much dust in the air. But no one's choking, no one's complaining, all is joy, all is peace. Everyone is happy as God is flooding that place. My teachers sit around the outside and usually they're standing there, arms crossed, they're just waiting for the preacher man to get over so they can get back to the classroom. But that morning, God flooded over those teachers <laughs> And many of them were joining in with the kids, raising their hands. You know, I, I love our Botswana brothers and sisters because one of the ways that they express joy is by dancing. It's just natural. And that morning, I'd never witnessed that before. But that morning, three of my teachers come up and they start dancing in front of the children. The joy on their faces, the joy in their movement was unmistakable. And then my stoic principle, the one that I'd never heard say a nice word to the children, I'd never seen her smile, but that morning as she stood in front of the kindergartners, just like she always did, 
All of a sudden, I saw her bouncing. Next thing I knew, her toes were leaving the ground. And then I saw a smile come on her face as God brought that transforming power. That school was redeemed and transformed to the glory of his name. Hallelujah. That's what we are doing in bringing the gospel to a lost and dying generation. And let me tell you, that school has not been the same since. We found out later that that part of the nation, that part of, the, or that, part of that, that village, that's where all of the witch doctors in the Sangomas, most of them live in that section. Ten minutes a week? Ten minutes a week broke the curses. Ten minutes a week broke the oppression. Ten minutes a week brought life, brought hope, brought peace. Hallelujah. That's the power of the gospel in only 10 minutes time. Why? Why? Because when God's word goes out, it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all he wants it to, and it will prosper wherever he sends it, even in 10 minutes of time. Hallelujah. We praise God for that. And now God has just opened the doors wide open. This school, along with one of our other schools, has been recognized by the national government because of the increase in test scores. I've got teachers from these schools coming up to me all the time, unsolicited, but they tell me, we need more of you in our schools. You need to know that when you come to our school with the gospel, that our discipline problems go down, our test scores are going up. The head of the primary schools in Botswana sent an email to all of the primary schools and they said, you need this program in your schools. Get a hold of this committee. They will help you. They will bring that program there. This is the answer that we need for our education system. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what we are doing together. And God's word is going forth in power. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for, for, for helping us, standing with us and praying. As my wife said, please pick up a prayer card. We desperately need prayer. It's prayer that wins the battle. We know that people are praying already. We have people telling us all the time, but we know already because we sense it. We see it. We see the doors miraculously open before us. But God wants to redeem this generation and he's going to spread it across the continent of Africa as well. What Barb didn't share with you is that, is that by 2030, half of Africa, 500 million people, are going to be under the age of 15. Half the continent will be under the age of 15. We are mobilizing right now to reach those. And my fellow missionaries in, 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 in Africa that, that are reaching children have come to us and said, we like this GEMS program. And while we can't get into the primary schools in our countries, we have other applications where we can use it. We want to translate it into French. We want to translate it into Swahili. We want to translate it into Portuguese, three main languages on the continent, so that we can use it to, to, to reach the children of Africa. That's what we are doing together. So thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your partnership. We appreciate your help. May God richly bless you as you continue to sow into the kingdom, as you continue to hear the, the, and, 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 and obey the command of the Great Commission to go into all the world. We appreciate it. Let me pray for you this morning or this evening. Father, I thank you for these men and women tonight. I thank you for their heart, for you, and for your kingdom, and I thank you for their partnership. I thank you, Father, for how you are using your gospel and your words to reach even the children of Africa. Father, many of them still today are walking in darkness, but Father, they're going to see a great light. And I thank you, Father, for the partnerships that are being made. Father, to expand and to develop and to spread your kingdom through this dark continent. I believe that one day it will not be known as a dark continent, but it will be the continent of light because of your life, because of your love, because of your power that is transforming and pushing back the powers of darkness. 
Encourage your people tonight. Bless them and fill them, Father, with that encouragement and with that knowledge that, that knows they are making a difference. Nothing is insignificant in your kingdom. And we thank you that and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.